Lena is an important value chain for going for a sustainable society. It can be used to replace fossil-based products. Lignocity is a unique test bed in the world. We can produce uh, lignin from uh, different uh, black liquors that is, comes from different paper mills and uh, we can scale it up from uh, only a few grams up to tons. Lignin in one sentence is the glue in wood, but you can extract it uh, in the process we do here in Ligna City. And instead of burning it in the paper mill, we can uh, create a higher value with uh, evaluating the lignin into uh, different products. It can be in asphalt, it can be made carbon fiber out of it, and it can be made bioplastic and many other applications. Uh, the test bed is located uh, as a neighbor to Nordic paper where the black liquor comes from, that we produce lignin out of. Within the test bed Ligna City, you also get contact with the, the research institute RISE. We can help companies that are interested in the lignin value chains, from the raw material lignin to the end products. So here at RISE we have resources to work on the lignin that produce in Ligna City. Uh, we work on the different applications such as uh, thermoplastics, thermosets, chemicals and fuels from lignin. So in this lab we make lignin based carbon fiber and use it in different applications. For example in this car you can see the roof is a lignin based carbon fiber composite that the carbon fiber were made here in this lab. Also this car has a lithium ion battery that in this battery also we use the lignin based carbon fibers. In Ligna City, we want to uh, welcome uh, small and medium-sized uh, enterprises uh, that we can help to take the leap from idea to market in small and safe steps, which reduces uh, the risk to scale up. Our time here at RICE was, was a key in our development. It helped us to have our products ready for the market. And now we are moving on and, and starting our demo plant unit outside Stockholm, where we will produce 2,000 tons per year of our material right now. This is one of the end application of what we do at Rencom, using lignin to make plastic bags. The name of it is Renol, and we can mix it with bioplastics or fossil-based plastics, depending on the applications you want to do with it. Region Värmland is strong in bioeconomy, partly because we have a lot of forests here and the skills in how to create different applications out of the wood, but we want to grow even better and bigger on the bioeconomy, and lignin is one track. Here we have space for new possibilities with conference room, facilities and the laboratory. And very welcome to today's webinar. Uh, today we have the pleasure to uh, present Jonas Ekblad from uh, NCC here in Sweden and Natasha Mungo from FP Innovations in Canada. And the topic for both presentation is how to add lignin into asphalt to replace bitumen. So we look forward to listen to this. Uh, we remind you that this event is recorded so later on, you can find it on uh, the Ligno City webpage, where you also can find the previous uh, recorded webinars. And also, if you like to see the film again or show it to a friend, it is also available on the homepage. Uh, if you want to play around with the views on your screen, you have it in your upper right corner. Uh, we recommend speakers view. Uh, because then you will see the presentations in large and who presents you will have next to the presentation. Uh, we do plan to uh, organize more on the similar events like this. Uh, so we are happy to receive input uh, and uh, tips on uh, who you would like to listen to, topics you want to hear and uh, persons you would like to listen to. So uh, if uh, you have any good uh, input on that. You can write it in the chat or take a contact afterwards. Thank you for that. And uh, if you have any questions to the speakers, we also kindly ask you to use the chat. Just type your questions and we will take them after the presentations. Uh, hello, I say it now to Jonas. How are you today? 
I'm fine. I'm doing great. Doing great. And you're all located yes. where in the world? Uh, for the moment, I'm in Upland's Vespi, slightly north of Stockholm, on the second floor in Upland's Vespi office. Very good. And uh, we do look forward to listen to your presentation. So feel free to share the screen. There we go. All yours. Climate change and asphalt paving. That's I have, will have, I will have the title of the brief presentation of the brief uh, review of our project together with Rice uh, having lignin in uh, asphalt. Uh, the slightly the somewhat ambiguous title is because we have, at least in my mind, we kind of have two perspectives on this. Uh, uh, on, on this topic or this project. We, of course, we want to address global climate and, and reduce carbon footprints or the environmental impact of the business we do as uh, we pave. But it's also, uh, um, we, we, we also have another, uh, we want to change the mindset slightly or we, will, we, we want to change or we will in, influence the mindset in, in paving. There is, historically a extreme focus on technical characteristics of paving. There are so many different methods and there are so many different characterizations that we do, and that, but they all have a technical focus, but we want to change the mindset to, uh, we want to increase the importance of, of uh, looking at uh, environmental impact characteristics. They are, might even be equally important uh, or, so we will not only look at, of course, we will not only look at technical uh, characterization as the technical performance of the asphalt, but we will also focus on changing the mindset. And that's something that the whole industry, at least in, in Sweden that I know of, uh, is uh, the road authorities and everyone involved is, is uh, uh, understands that we have maybe have to change technical requirement and we might not use the paradigms we use today uh, for testing asphalt or evaluating pavings. We might have to change the way we test asphalt. So that's that's part of the the the, uh, the overall philosophy of the project to change that. We. Uh, we might want to. We might. We might take a, a slightly less technical performance, less good performing asphalt, but if it ha has enough global uh, climate effects, that's what we want to introduce the cons uh, also in this project. Don't only look at, at uh, technical requirements, and that's as I said. That's a that's a mutual process in in in. Uh, in, uh, in in Sweden, ongoing, uh, and just to to set the level gr the ground here, the, the asphalt is paved uh, is is usually produce a very high temperature. So we use a lot of heating energy, uh, and most if you look at the pavings uh, paving operations in twenty uh, just six years ago, uh, we use a lot of fossil fuel energy in production heating the asphalt at the asphalt plant. Uh, so that's the, where the almost all the energy is consumed. Then we have some transports and we had some paving. These are the pavers and the rollers. They are just a small fraction of the entire uh, energy consumption or carbon footprint. Uh, that has had, had that, that, that these patterns have had a radical change uh, in in uh, the few last years only, or the six years that we have almost all, a large part of the fuels we use in heating the uh, the asphalt is nowadays bio based. So the the carbon footprint of the production phase is it's is is heavily reduced, but we still have the, it's still the larger part of the the carbon footprint we have in asphalt paving. But it's not anymore the heating energy. The, this is the input materials like the bitumen. So to even further decrease here, we have to look at the bitumen, which is a part of the asphalt. Uh, this is the, 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 where we are today at Sweden. The, the heating 
uh, and I would say that's fairly general. There is a lot of, still we can, there is room for improvement on the heating side, but we are closing in to have bio-based fuels and we have to look at the input materials. We have to look at this blue, which is not that much heating energy anymore. It's more of the materials coming in. And, and, and just another asphalt for non-asphalt people, uh, asphalt is mostly crushed aggregate, mostly rock uh, of various sizes. And when I say uh, we have 16 millimeter size here and we have oops, different particles down to very fine. This is flour, this is powder stuff. And then when, when I will use the term filler, then uh, I will re uh, refer to this part that is really small. Uh, but we still have it. So asphalt is made up of crushed aggregate uh, of various sizes. A large part is very fine uh, and everything is glued together by the bitumen. So the, the general, the overall perspective on, uh, on for this project was that we will, we will, we have, will have, we, looking at ambitious amounts we will have try to use real uh, large part replace a large part of the bitumen with lignin up to 40 percent we've seen so that's that's one and as i briefly touched upon before we might not see as good technical performance but that might be outweighed by the environmental impact performance so we will have a split vision. We will look at technical and climatic, uh, the climate response. And we are really focused on road tests. We really want to have real testing. We want to re make real pavements. Uh, laboratory works can get you that far, but uh, the real test is when you do, do pavements. So rapidly go into test pavements. Uh, also, we are not, we do not want to increase binder content and we do not want to decrease mineral filler. It should read decrease mineral filler content. That's the very fine part. We have a lot of aggregate, they are cheap and they are without what we produce. We don't really want to uh, uh, reduce the mineral filler content. So these are binary conditions for the, uh, uh, the mixes we make try to make. And so going back to the road test, this is a, just a brief history. This is something I really like. Uh, this short story I will tell you. Uh, starting in 1917, uh, during the first uh, Great War, uh, World War, lots of trucks were going for from inside USA to the coast and to be shipped to, 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 to Europe for service. And in 1917 and 1918, all large part of the network broke down entirely. So uh, large efforts were, uh, lots of words and a lot of projects were started to increase the, 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 the capacity of the bearing capacity of the roads and how do we build a great, better road network. And this is one of my favorite uh, quotes from this time, uh, establish the art of road building as an exact science. Road building is an empirical science. It's, it's an art, it still is. You, you, we build roads as we built them last time. That's how we learn. We try and fail. This is, this is funny for me. <laughs> <laughs> establish art of road building as an exact science. Uh, in, in that perspective, the, the public roads authorities in the United States, they made so much effort to, to create. And then 20 years later, they ended up with this contraption, really strange thing uh, with an extreme, we look at this with an extreme precision, one thousandths of an inch, that's pretty much nothing. Uh, that's that's what that's how much I decrease in length during a day during one minute, uh, roughly. So going from this bad roads and still being within the laboratory twenty years later, 
this is not how we will want to do it. We want to go, we want to test on roads. Uh, we want to go out and test roads, which leads me to the, the maybe the most important document in payment and highway engineering history. This is the test schedule, the test setup for the Azure road tests. Uh, if you are payment and in, in, into payment engineering, you you surely have heard of this. And uh, this is probably the most important document in highway engineering. This very page. These are 468 road tests, uh, test stretches. So this is how we want to do it. This is how we want to uh, go about in research. We want to pave roads. Not we have no. We do not have the capacity to pave 468 different test sites or test roads, test parts. Uh, but that's for me. It's really, or for us, it's really important to go out field testing. Uh, so we actually, as a company, we have a, a fair amount of our own, in a, but uh, to a much smaller scale, of course, than this one. But we have a fair amount of our own test sites, and now we want to. We haven't gotten there just yet, but we want to establish something here then uh, in Karsta uh, or the neighboring where we Ligno City is almost where Ligno City is close by. So test roads, road tests are really important for us. That's how we want to go about. So we have started, uh, this is actually Karsta, what we have started in small, small scale and slightly carefully paving uh, low volume roads. This is a bike lane. Uh, so it's it's not really critical, uh, and it's uh, the traffic is of course very low. Um, so we have started, and or we are slowly moving up to to be able to pave or dare to pave higher volume roads. Um, but this is where we want to go. We want to increase uh, uh, the importance of the the or the traffic volumes, the importance is, I'm sure this is a really important bike lane, but uh, the volume, traffic volumes, we wanna go pave on on, on uh, higher volume roads, but we are not really there yet. So th this presentation will be a bit short and real results because we have, at this point, we have scattered results and they are not uh, compiled and analyzed. Uh, but of course, even though I, I, I kind of this uh, laboratory works, of course, you have to do laboratory works. That's where you start to, to get a feel for it. So we have done some bitumen basics and we have established mixing models of bitumen and lignin. Uh, and we have prepared laboratory mixes uh, for equisiveness or how, what, how we choose to make our test plans for the uh, field tests. Uh, so these is, these are basics, uh, but um, and we can establish these kind of models. These these for non asphalt people. These are consistency measures. Different how stiff is this is just the binder, the bitumen part, and this is these are measures on how stiff it is. If it's increased in penetration, it's actually less stiff. It's softer. Uh, so if we make different, if we start out with different qualities of, of bitumen and we mix them with a certain amount of, of lignin, we can really closely predict how the bitumen mix of the bitumen lignin mix will perform. But from there, it's really difficult to anticipate how a real payment will, will, will perform. Uh, do these test methods? These all of the most of these test methods are uh, they are developed using just bitumen, plain petroleum-based bitumen, and uh, they are not really suited for for other kinds of of, of of binders or even like this, which might be a composite uh, of a binder mastix or binder filler mix. Uh, and also the testing framework. We are. The, use, the testing framework we have in Sweden is based on testing the binder and testing the, the rock aggregate and just a few measures on the asphalt. Maybe these th this is not really applicable to these kind of mixes. It's it, it uh, so th this is also a mutual 
uh, development between road authorities and, and the project and all contractors and, and others that how are we going to test and evaluate these kind of mixes? That's, it's not really something that is uh, worked out or it's, it's a bit problematic. We are very, we have been dealing in asphalt for 100 years and we have, uh, have really established test methods and testing frameworks for buying and selling. Uh, so, and these might not really fit within these. And that's an administrative problem perhaps, but it's equally, it's still, it's, it's still a problem. Uh, how we, will we look at those uh, products? And also as I'm, 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 I'm blabbering about, lab is not road. Um, it is not, it's really difficult. We have to have both. Coming to the to to the carbon footprint, which we also look at, of course, uh, forest industry is uh, is not only producing lignin. There is also we try to put in in small gray here to not upset anyone in lignin city. Tallow pitch is also a common product for for a bitumen extender. Uh, but uh, forest industry is, of course, we have a lot of forests and, and forest industry is large, so it's an it's natural that our bio binders will come from forests. Uh, still, life cycle analysis not necessarily better than bitumen as so far. Uh, they, they still have a, a mo many of those products have, uh, they still have a um, carbon footprint. And, and bit is, they are not always better than bitumen. They are renewable and they are not from a fossil resource, but the production of those still have a footprint. Uh, the, it's there are different LCAs and and it depends on how you make your LCA and how you allocate carbon carbon uh, uh, exhaust and and how you allocate the energy between products like paper and lignin which carbon goes where uh, so, and, and so there are differences in LCAs but but uh, but uh, what we see, it's there are the, there is uh, uh, room for improvement for these for the carbon footprint of these biobinders, still, because they are competing on bitumen, which has a fairly low carbon footprint. It's fossil, but it's not burned. So so we are not we are not emitting very much uh, uh, the whole carbon content. So this is, this is an important aspect in all of this. The 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 bio uh, the, 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 it 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 needs improvement, but of course it can improve and it can be be a very low carbon footprint. So concluding, from a Swedish perspective, we have reduced the heating part, the heating energy we use on, used to be fossil based. We are now mostly Bowie based in Sweden. I would say that goes for all contractors, not only NCC for, for uh, to a various degree, there are still room for a lot of improvement, but we have, we have to go to the next now and that's the materials and the most carbon with the, the, the input material with the highest carbon footprint is the bitumen. We definitely see an increased focus on climate in contracts and we are pushing for even more. We want to see them in contract. It's, we want to see those uh, LCAs and, uh, and, and calculations for greenhouse gas emissions in, in contract. We are seeing them and they are increasing and uh, that's good. Um, and, Last, pavement engineering is based on test roads and road tests. We have to go do field testing. And sorry, but that needs patience. It takes a while, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, it's a bit time consuming. Which maybe Natasha could elaborate on. Thank you, Jonas. Very interesting with all the history as well. We have some questions that we might take before we let Natasha continue. <laughs> and yes. uh, the first one is uh, where and when will you test lignin in asphalt? And I guess mm. uh, that is different from Sweden to Canada. So 
Yeah, is it for me? I, I, I kind of showed that on the map, didn't I? But yes. I, it was still all Värmland, <laughs> something. But that's only where and when. We hope next year because now with winter is coming, uh, so we will do some, but not we will do some more paving, but that will not be on on public roads. Uh, so hopefully next year, uh, and hopefully somewhere in Värmland. But that also it, 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 there are complicating factors. We have to find a test road, and, and depends on our business. And yeah, uh, hopefully next year in Värmland. Yeah. We'll, we'll let everyone know when it's happening, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, this one you also mentioned, but to repeat, uh, what's the amount of lignin in bitumen or will be? Yeah, we are. We were aiming for 40 and we have paid 40 and, or, and 30 uh, and 20 and um, 10 and 5. We'll <laughs> so we'll see <laughs> those very high amounts. Uh, we see as uh, as not as good, but that might be balanced by the climate impact, perhaps. Uh, but we we are uh, we are aiming for very high amounts, but maybe we are not reaching forty. Hopefully, real close, but we don't really know. We have paid paid uh, those amounts, but we'll see. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and as you may know, in the Netherlands, already more than 25 roads have uh, been constructed using lignin as partly substitute for bitumen over the past five years. How do you see the future for lignin-based bitumen in Sweden? What hurdles do we need to overcome? Yeah. Uh, part of this is, is, is this, these business-related uh, issues that I talked about, the test methods, the testing paradigms, testing frameworks, how do we buy and sell? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing. We, we can do a lot of test roads and test roads and test roads, but these are, uh, but to really get to get it going, we need to establish how do we test those? Uh, are they, are, can we use the old methods? Uh, I don't see that we are, we will have the, uh, these business relations uh, worked out by next year. Uh, so we will absolutely still be on, on test roads. Uh, but there we see, well, I don't know how many test roads we have in Sweden on Olegnen, 10 perhaps, but, but the, 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 or less, I don't really know. But, but uh, still there are a fair amount starting in and they will increase next year and they will increase again. But until it becomes business, uh, uh, it's a few years away at least. Uh, there are there are a lot of issues with buying and selling and how authorities can 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 buy stuff and uh, that's good uh, uh, but it takes a while. We take one more question before we let uh, Natasha and I know there are more uh, to be continued but we take them also after Natasha's presentation. But the last one is: Does the mix also work in combination with uh, rap? And please mm. explain for us what is rap because I'm not sure everyone listening knows that. Recycled asphalt pavement or reused asphalt pavement, They're, but it's actually old pavements that are reused. Uh, they are usually milled or excavated uh, and uh, taken back to asphalt plants and reused. Uh, it's a common saying and it's really true. Uh, uh, asphalt is 100% recyclable and 100% of asphalt is recycled. We never throw anything away anymore. It's always used in a new pavement. Uh, so that's a really uh, important boundary or prerequisite for these, uh, that they will go, you, we can use them as wrap and they will blend with wraps. So actually that's also in this project that we will have to, we will want to look at those, those that we can recycle it and it works well with the recycled material. Really, really important. I cannot stress that enough <laughs> because a large part of the economics in the, is in re recycling. And of course, it's, it's a way of closing circles and, uh, uh, and reusing materials. Uh, but so it's important. Uh, usually recycling works pretty well. Uh, even the, the, you have to know what you're recycling, uh, but you can adjust production. So we don't really foresee foresee any any large problems, but 
we haven't really we haven't tested it just just yet thank you jonas uh, we leave some text here for uh, after Natasha's presentation and say good morning, Natasha. You are and good astrolog. afternoon. <laughs> yeah, good morning astrolog. for those uh, here on this side of the Atlantic. And good afternoon in Europe. Thank you so much, uh, Natasha, for uh, taking your time to present what is going on in Canada with the uh, lignin in asphalt. So please go ahead. So you can see everything now, I guess. Yes, we can see your screen and hear you. OK, well. so uh, thank you, Maria, for uh, inviting me. I'm very happy to be here to discuss the advancement and also the challenges of our lignin based asphalt project, um, a project that we started over a year now. Uh, for those who don't know who we are, FP Innovations is a private, not-for-profit R&D organization that specializes in the creation of solutions uh, to accelerate the growth of the Canadian forest sector. We're deployed across Canada. Our head office is in Montreal, where I am, and uh, we have uh, other major labs in Quebec City and Vancouver. We also run eight pilot plants and offices across Canada to be close to our members' operations. Uh, FP Innovations is serving over 90 members with an annual budget of about $68 million. Uh, working with members on the entire value chain directly at their facilities gives us uh, this unique perspective and capacity to ensure that the improvements that we bring to the forest management also respond to the market requirements. We help in reducing costs and improving productivity at all levels to ensure competitivity of uh, our Canadian industry. So. Having uh, developed production processes for two types of lignin offers an infinity of opportunities. As you know, many research centers and universities are pursuing very promising projects, and we're seeing more and more of them getting to the market. Although we know that for a new industry to adopt a forest-based bioproduct, there's a need to ensure a steady supply of products that uh, will also have the right characteristics. For the forest industry to invest in the production of bio-based products, such as lignin, there is a need for a demand in large quantity. Our business model uh, for a quick market adoption of new lignin based applications is to work hand in hand with partners and end users for development up to the demonstration phase. And uh, in order to achieve this, we can only focus on a few target applications. At FP Innovations, uh, we follow two distinct and complementary approaches to the development of forest-based biorefinery. The first, uh, a cellulose-based uh, centered biorefinery producing lignin as a bioproduct, is based on traditional craft mills that mainly value the cellulose for its properties as pulp fibers. The second, a lignin-based biorefinery producing sugars from hydrolyzed cellulose as a byproduct produces a near native and distinct lignin suitable for different applications. For this asphalt project, we're working with the craft lignin as uh, it's the only one now that is actually commercially available in Canada. Um, FP Innovations developed the Lignoforce system for the separation and purification of craft lignin from black liquor. With an initial step of oxidation, uh, we're capable of reducing odor, environmental health and safety issues, as well as low sulfur compound emissions. This process consumes less chemicals and has a high fil higher filtration rate uh, that produces a lignin of high purity. The first lignoforce system has been implement implemented at West Fraser 
at Hinton in Alberta and has a production capacity of about 10,000 tons per year, producing high quality craft lignans in both the acid form and basic form. Lignin use in uh, Canadian pavements is uh, projected to increase at 3% per year with an increasing market penetration as lignin asphalt becomes more accepted. The chart that you see here shows projected demand if the lignin is incorporated at 5 or 10% of bitumen replacement into the asphalt. A, um, what we we consider that there's a major impediment to these projection uh, as there is a limited amount of crack, craft lignin produced by Canadian mills. Currently, only one produces 10,000 tons. Uh, so here we projected additional craft lignin plants in 2024, 2025, and a third in 27 or 20, 28. Um, we're not making the further projection at this time, but we know that there's a potential for up to a million tons per year. The concept of lignin as a partial substitute of bitumen and asphalt has been the object of many studies since the 1980s uh, with various types of lignin showing all kinds of advantages that could respond to the pavement industry's challenges. In the Netherlands, uh, namely with the Wageningen uh, Research Center and now the new Chaplin uh, Consortium, they've tested and demonstrated lignin substitution ratios up to 50%, and they already have some roads that are made of lignin. The objective of our project is to make a demonstration under our much colder Norton climate and also under our Canadian regulations and with the craft lignin that our industry can produce. Our initial lab results show that we should now target a five to 10% of craft lignin to ensure performance gains only. Uh, from the learnings of the demonstrations, we will be able to conduct full life cycle analysis, both on the economic and the environmental side. Uh, the project is being conducted with participants along the entire value chain to get an early buy-in by the industry from lignin producers to road constructors and clients. By um, involving local producers and municipalities, we'll be able to obtain all information that is required by the industry to quickly adopt the new product. The producers will have had a chance to manipulate it and verify its workability under real commercial conditions. The project comprises six phases and is well advanced. We finalized the first um, the preliminary uh, studies and also the first module of lab tests at ETS with lignin as is in unmodified asphalt, no additive, uh, no modification on the lignin. Uh, there are gonna be additional modules uh, to increase the lignin ratio by uh, bringing in some uh, additives and modifying the lignin. Uh, we will test then the formulation on a full-scale simulator that's happening next week and have already conducted two on-road demonstrations. Another one is also planned for next week and we will pursue on the west coast under warmer climate in BC in the spring. Uh, from these demo, we will collect primary data and complete a full cycle analysis. So here are the site locations of the lignin based projects that we're following on the Euro European front in the Netherlands and in Sweden, and uh, the ones that we're conducting here in Canada this year. Uh, while they appear on this map to have similar climates, the Canadian average temperature are much lower in the winter season than what we see in Europe. That brings additional challenges that we need to address. So you can see here the top lines indicating yearly average temperature in the Netherlands and Sweden. 
while the bottom ones indicate average temperature in Canadian cities where we are conducting our demonstration. In uh, January, Sturgeon County, which is in uh, Alberta, and Quebec City averaged a minus 15 degrees Celsius, while in Thunder Bay in Ontario is in the lows uh, minus 20s. Before bringing this uh, new asphalt on the road, as uh, Jonas was suggesting, uh, we need to conduct in-depth lab testing program, which we did uh, at the laboratory for pavement and bituminous material, the LCMB, at École de Technologie Supérieure, or AT ETS. This lab uh, was selected uh, to perform this work because of its recognized expertise with pavement formulation, emulsions, and with the incorporation of recycled materials in asphalt mixes. Lignin-based asphalt needs to have all desired properties to meet specifications of main transportation departments. For example, it needs to have a wide viscoelastic region not to become brittle at low temperature that would create thermal cracking or too liquid at high temperature, uh, which would generate rutting and fatigue cracking degradation. It also needs good resisting to aging and good compatibility between the bitumen and the aggregate. All tests conducted by ETS are specifically designed to address the hot uh, mix asphalt uh, pavement performance parameters under our Canadian requirements. The lab tests confirm that dry lignin, pow lignin powder can be mixed first in the bitumen. This is called a wet mix. Another way of adding lignin is to blend it with the aggregates before mixing in the bitumen. Uh, we call this the dry mixing process. This is how you would add lignin at an asphalt production plant. Lignin is more likely to be adopted by the asphalt producers than the bitumen producers in the short term. The wet and dry mixing processes were both studied at ETS. The effects of lignin on the properties of the bitumen and on the performance of the hot mix asphalt were also evaluated. Uh, for incorporation of lignin into hot bitumen, we first need to take all of its water out, so we dried it at 99%. Lab tests were conducted on bitumen at substitutions levels up to 50%. The pictures are microscopic images taken after mixing. As you can see, the lignin is well dispersed and there are no large accumulations. Working with a dry powder brings its own challenges uh, it, because it needs to kept, be kept dry. It also increases viscosity, which may require higher processing temperature at high substitution ratios, and uh, it tends to be messy. So packaging is one of our next target in this project. ETS assessed the performance grade of one of the most common bitumen grades, uh, PG58-28 and PG52-34, um, with 0%, 10%, 20%, and 30% of lignin. The PG grading system is based on climate. So the grade notation consists of two portions, high and low pave pavement service temperature. In this case, the PG58-28 performs from a plus 58 degrees Celsius to a minus 28 degrees Celsius. Um, as can be seen in the table, the addition of lignin to bitumen resulted in performance increase at high temperature and showed a slight decrease of performance at low temperature, although still meeting the performance requirements at substitution rates of less than 10%. Interestingly, the substitution of 20% lignin 
transforms the PG-52 uh, minus 34 bitumen to a PG-58 minus 28, potentially creating a means to manufacture a greener form of this relatively common PG grade. A compaction test uh, was conducted to ensure that the mix can be properly compacted once it is placed on municip municipal roads and highways. Um, the results obtained in this ETS study suggest that it is challenging to produce uh, hot mix asphalt with more than 5% lignin that would respect one of the Quebec requirement. On the other hand, uh, some of our asphalt partners have tested lignin-based asphalt compaction, and it confirms the addition of lignin seems to stiffen the mix, but still meet the standards. Um, the mixes may require slightly higher compaction temperatures to achieve target densities and air voids for mixes containing over 10% of lignin. The performance at low temperature is not affected negatively for mixes with low lignin contents. Uh, though these results were obtained only on one repetition of the tests for each mix and uh, they should be confirmed with additional tests which are being conducted uh, as we speak. This chart illustrates the rut depths of the PG58-28 asphalt versus the same mixture with 5% and with 20% lignin substitution. As is apparent, the lignin substantially improved rutting resistance on, of the mix for all numbers of loading cycles. Um, this really highlights how the modification of asphalt mixtures with lignin improves the performance of the asphalt as compared to the addition of waste products such as uh, crumbed uh, rubber, glass or plastics, which are just means to dispose of the waste and they may actually reduce the asphalt performance. Again, all these results have been compiled by ETS, by Professor Alan Carter, Jean-Claude Carré and Wizam Al-Falahat. As you saw, uh, results from lab tests at EDS have indicated that rutting and fatigue performance can be improved with lignin. We will now test these formulations at University Laval with their accelerated trafficking device. The full-scale uh, test pavement will be built in this test pit. Temperature and water table in the roadbed will be carefully controlled. A battery of instrumentation will be incorporated in the roadbed to measure stresses, strains, moisture, and temperature. We plan to use this device to put about 160,000 passes on the test surface in about three weeks. This is about three years of traffic for a typical low volume highway. Once we get a stable running rate uh, for one combination of temperature and load, we'll increase either the temperature or wheel load. Uh, we plan to check rutting at two different wheel loads and three different temperatures. We'll use uh, a laser device to measure rutting rate throughout the testing. We're very excited to announce that the first Canadian on-road demonstrations of uh, lignin-based asphalt were a success. Uh, one was conducted at Sturgeon County in Alberta on August 26, with lignin being incorporated in bitumen with a 10% recycled asphalt. Um, another one in Thunder Bay uh, on, in Ontario was conducted on September 20th, with lignin being added directly into the asphalt mix. We wanted to have a showcase of two different processes so we can have comparative results. The lignin content was limited to 5% for these two first demos because uh, no adverse effects had been noted in the lab testing at this level. And as a first effort, we did not know how the lignin would affect workability. So we wanted to limit the risk of failure. 
In both cases, we have a section of the road paved with conventional asphalt and one with lignin-based asphalt. So we can have direct comparatives in terms of temperatures and traffic over time. During our first field demos, the pavers did notice that the mixtures uh, tightened up faster than the conventional asphalt. They were able to achieve the target density without additional compati compactive effort, merely by starting to compact at 10 to 15 degrees Celsius higher temperature just as they would do for a higher performance grade of asphalt, for example, the PG 70 minus 28. Although uh, the odor uh, of lignin is reduced with uh, the lignoforce system to produce the lignin, we can confirm that lignin-based asphalt has a distinctive odor, and we can smell the asphalt trucks arriving on the site. I would say a smell that resembles uh, burnt wood. Workers did not seem to mind, and overall, they said that the mixture was just like normal asphalt. Another on-road trial is planned for next week in Quebec City on a road that needs resurfacing because of rutting issues. And uh, we're pushing the limits by increasing the substitution level to 10% and proceeding at the end of the season when temperature are already pretty low. Next spring, we will conduct a fourth trial in warmer climate areas of British Columbia, where we believe we can increase the substitution level to at least 20%. We are also pursuing the lab work on new formulations, including bioadditives and modified lignin. So for those who are interested in LinkedIn work, we're here to help. Uh, we have uh, R&D laboratories uh, with state-of-the-art uh, characterization and process capabilities. In addition, we have a craft LinkedIn demonstration plant that operates on a semi-continuous basis and is sized to, to produce up to 50 kilos per day of LinkedIn. The technical feasibility of producing lignin from black liquor using the Lignoforce system can be evaluated at this pilot plant. We can conduct uh, lab tests and demo plant trials to generate data relating to black liquor processability, lignin recovery yield, chemical consumption, as well as lignin product characteristics. These data can then be used to provide accurate estimates on the capital and operating costs associated with a lignoforce lignin plant. We have the capability of preparing all sorts of lignin samples in quantities up to 1,000 kilos, for example, dry lignin at 99%, or modified lignin. So thank you for your time. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Natasha. Really interesting presentation. And uh, yes, there are some questions and I will try to read uh, some kind of combination of some and some can be directed both to you and Jonas, I think. Uh, there comes up if there is any cost advantages and how economical is it to use only 10% of lignin? That's a combined question that I think both of you can reflect on, Natasha. So maybe I can start uh, and let you, Jonas, uh, uh, tell us from the asphalt producer perspective, because this is something that we're really looking into. Um, so the the bitumen price goes up and up and down from a year to another, from a season to another, and uh, depending on the uh, storing capacity of uh, the the intervenants uh, or participants in that, um, we evaluated that the. Um, to, to have bitumen, uh, lignin replacing bitumen, you would have in Canada to be uh, in the range of probably 400 to $500 a ton. Um, although if you work with the asphalt producers, then 
they're going to be buying that bitumen for the bitumen producers. So we believe that then the prices are going to be comparative to what is paid by the ministries of transportation and what we see on those uh, price index. And here we see that the price may range depending on the, the region and the season from 400 to $650 a ton. And over time, we are expecting these prices to go up, the bitumen price may go up. Some believe that uh, the electric car may bring down the production of uh, fuel lower. And uh, without the fuel, there will be less refineries producing uh, bitumen. Jonas, what do you think? How much would you pretty, be paying for, for a lignin? Pretty much the same. It depends on the contract parts. We see we see that we can get more pay in contracts for climate reductions, and then you will of course have the opportunity to pay. But asphalt is a bulk product; it's a low com cost product. Uh, uh, it's it's hard to 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 compete uh, if you don't have economics. Uh, there is I don't really think we have a really established market for lignin bitumen, so it's hard to tell on the prices but what we see it's it's comparable perhaps uh well, it's not cheaper anyway with lignin so we cannot uh, make it cheaper we have to have it in uh in products that we can t uh, have uh, increased prices on or it will be in contracts with uh, uh, where we can get uh, the cost very good. And also uh, two questions uh, together about the modification of the lignin used. Uh, can we tell more about that? Not at this moment, but uh, we will be very happy to do that in uh, a year or so. Same answer. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that, that meant for, 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 I'm not sure about the happy part though, but, but perhaps. The, the... Yes. And um, um, to, uh, uh, I think, uh, Natasha, have you tested other than rock based lignins in asphalt applications? And how do they work in that case? I'm not sure I understood uh, your question, Maria. Sorry. Did, can you repeat that? Yeah, you described in your presentation that there are different kind of lignins. Craft lignin is one. Have you used other than craft lignins? Um, right now, right now, we're really uh, concentrating all of our efforts on crafting. I, we've read literature that other lignin can be used. I think that uh, uh, Wageningen has published and tested many types of uh, lignin. Uh, we wanted to do a demonstration with the lignin that was available in Canada. So we really concentrated it on the craft lignin. And also to you, Natasha, what was the amount of lignin in the Sturgeon County and Thunder Bay projects by weight of bitumen or mix? 5%. 5% on both of them. Yes. Around. Yeah. And now you try with more for the next. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Next, next week, 10%. And next year, maybe 20. Very good. And we have the input here on, on the price of the lignin depends on the source also. In general, hydrolysis lignin is cheaper than, for instance, lignin boost. Uh, and I would say it, it depends on many factors just for the pricing. Um, and how, how much would that be? We, we don't have any price in the, in the chat. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I think we need to come back to the prices. Um, I, I'm reading here uh, uh, to see if I have covered most of, of the incoming questions. And I think yes. And we are one minute away from being on, on time. Uh, so I would say thank you very much to Jonas and to Natasha for presentation. Thank you for everyone listening and taking your time to write the questions. We go through, so I'm sure that we have responded to them. Uh, and uh, the recording will be on the website. So thank you so much for today.